Welcome everybody, thanks for joining us today. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Megan Twentyman, the brand manager here at Soft Solutions for our VoIP area. Um, on the call with me today, I've got Anoop, who's our senior VoIP engineer. And Anisha, who's our technical specialist. Um, Hi everyone. I think Anoop's on mute. Oh yeah, <laughs> good morning everyone. <laughs> Awesome, thanks team. Um, so we're gonna zoom through the presentation. We're gonna have a look inside the Call for Tel 3CX appliances, which we're pretty excited to have signed a distribution agreement for, and we've got some new things coming. So just a quick look at our agenda today. We're just going to do a general introduction, look at the specifications of the units and the key details, um, the user interface. So we've got some screenshots and Anisha will actually walk you through the device. Um, looking at maintenance and troubleshooting, um, and then just our sort of resources and keeping up to date, and we will wrap up with a Q&A. We do really want to stick to this bite-sized format that um, I'm famous for. So let's get started. So what is this new device? It is a 3CX certified appliance that comes pre-loaded with 3CX version 18 to be run on-prem and preloaded with the 3CX SBC or session border controller. So it can be run in one of those modes. So if you're hosting in a data center or the cloud, you'd be using it as an SBC for your provisioning of your hardware on site, or if it's on-prem, then you'd be running it on that on-prem. So it saves on engineering time and configuration because it's all preloaded. So it's gonna cut down that initial time of maybe updating a Raspberry Pi 4 for the session border controller, et cetera. So we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like as we move through the slides. So I'm not going to go through all of the specifications. We'll let you um, have a read of that and um, we'll have this information available in the presentation. But basically it's a mini NUC, it's 3CX branded, it's certified by 3CX, um, and it comes out of a company called Calfacare, which brand them as Call for Tell devices. They actually have a number of devices, um, and we'll talk a little bit later about a new device that will be coming later in the year as well. So as I mentioned, it can be run as 3CX on-prem for up to 150 users or up to a 48 simultaneous call license. We kind of go 32 and below is where we're positioning this. It can be used for the 3CX SBC mode. Um, the setup and configuration is really, really simple. It is plug and play, um, and it's got an easy management um, interface from the cloud portal, um, and it just cuts down on that engineering time. We all know the pain of configuring Raspberry Pis for an SBC, etc. So I'm going to let um, Anisha talk to these couple of um, slides, and she'll take you through a walkthrough of the portal. Um, so I'll just let Anisha chat about these, and then I'll pass the controls over to her so she can give us a quick demo as well. Thanks, Megan. Uh, so in terms of the user interface, it's as you can see, um, according to the screenshots, it's very um, user friendly. It's very appealing to the eyes. Um, it's very simple and basic to understand as well. As you can see, um, the wording is very basic and simple. So um, we'll dive into the demo and I'll, I'll walk you through it and show you how easy it is actually to manage. So if I just give me um, just a moment, I'll just share my screen. Great, we've got that now, Anisha. Amazing. So the first thing you would want to do is you would want to um, go to this person looking tab here and check for updates. It's very critical that you make sure that um, the device is updated, otherwise um, the configuration won't be smooth. Um, so as you see, um, ours is re-updated. If not, it'll be yellow here and you just need to click update and it should update. The next thing you can go through and do is uh, select how you would like to set this up. So you can use it as on-prem 3CX and the click off um, to the tick, you can set it up as SBC. Uh, you can select the network interface and just down below, we've got um, some really useful uh, settings. So you can reset it, you can uninstall it, do a reboot, refresh, power off, um, check the version. You can even connect to the cloud, um, find out your versions just down below. And if you just go through the tabs, you can also configure the IP. So 
It's very easy, very simple. Um, uh, you can uh, set it as a LAN or you can use it as a WAN. Um, it's just one quick tip. It's recommended or best practice, I would say, to uh, set a static IP address so that um, that's a static IP address that's out of your DHCP range uh, for security purposes. So you can set, um, uh, configure LAN or WAN or um, your DNS. And you can also, um, in terms of the firewall, you can uh, change the default SIP port, um, the protocols, you can see the allowed ports, you can even um, select uh, what's uh, it, like any external access. So do you want like, if you do allow all, that's the whole world can access it or just a certain IP or IPs or just a certain IP range, for example, like just New Zealand IP ranges. So that's also um, a security feature. Uh, you can even connect your SIP here, so you can static route, allow which IPs, LAN, WAN. Um, you can see the route changes, and um, you can even, I believe we've gone through the settings, <laughs> but you can even go to um, contact us, sorry, just, we'll just, um, and you can go to contact us and you can um, head to like a knowledge base or you can get into the call for help. But, um, so yeah, as you can see, like, all that setup would just take you, I would say, around 10 to 15 minutes. I've tried it myself. It was very easy. Um, don't really need like much of a technical knowledge. So it's a very useful device and useful um, portal and easy to manage. And yeah, so that was just a quick brief demo and I'll just pass it over back to me. Fantastic, thanks Anisha. And what I should say while Anisha is passing the controls back to me is that um, we're actually running update five beta um, on our system and um, that's what we're running it on as one of the call for towel devices. Um, and Noop's also done a number of tests on the units um, prior to us signing the distribution agreement. So I'll just keep going through our presentation and then we'll get to the Q&A towards the end. So in terms of maintenance and troubleshooting, um, prior to signing that distribution agreement, I wanted to be sure that these devices were going to add benefits for our partners. Um, so we did some basic physical testing, such as unplugging the power to ensure that there was no operating system crashes, those types of things. Um, we didn't want to make sure that we wanted to make sure that there was no damage being done to the device and we're happy to report that um, Anoop had great fun walking past and unplugging it uh, one to two times um, each day for several days, putting some calls through the devices while we were doing the testing. Um, the reboot takes um, uh, around one to two minutes, it's just a standard NUC interface. Um, and as you saw from the demo, it's a really simple interface um, to understand, it's a dual purpose device um, and we're here to support it as well. So um, Care, the overall company for Call for Tal is based out of Singapore, um, but we're here in New Zealand hours for um, troubleshooting or anything like that. Um, Anoop has you know, put a number of technical questions to the team um, in Singapore to ensure that we knew exactly what we were doing. These devices have actually been deployed in several countries around the world now, including Australia, um, and they are really making a difference for 3CX partners, and we believe they are going to be a useful device for our partners here in New Zealand. Um, one key thing is if you're keeping all your recordings, obviously you're going to run out of space on the NUC. Um, so you can actually add an external drive um, for the storage of your recordings. So that would be a really good best practice thing to um, consider. So resources that um, are coming soon. I'm in the midst of working up a NX32 Lite data sheet. Um, obviously, we've got the normal resources that go with 3CX, which is your marketing kit and their website, which is evolving and changing on a daily basis at the moment. Um, if you need any resources, reach out to us as your distributor. And by attending these webinars, it really gives you the latest information around products and changes that are happening. Um, keeping up to date with what's happening with our VoIP brands, uh, brands is obviously really important. Um, technical trainings, we will have a date confirmed very soon for Q4. There will be a, well, it's 99% sure there's going to be an in-person event run by um, Nicholas Perez, our 3CX global trainer. Um, which will be based in Auckland. Um, we're also going to tie in a physical showcase event um, around the same time. Um, so keep watching, we will be sharing that information with you soon. Obviously, we have our regular communications via our newsletters and our weekly newsletter, VoIP newsletter and our LinkedIn um, 
group. Now, before I open it to Q&A, I just wanted to address an announcement that was made by 3CX overnight, which is the withdrawal of support for the Raspberry Pi 4 for 3CX on-prem instances, and they're highly encouraging people to move across to their hosted by 3CX solution, um, which has only been available for ANZ for a short time, um, but is working well for our customers, or there is options to look at the startup product. Now, startup is still in beta. We have been advised that we expect that to go live kind of end of September. Um, what we saw last night was that update five went to release candidate. Um, so that's about to go live as well. With the Raspberry Pi 4, the support is still there for the SBC mode. So that was a number of questions that I've already had this morning. Um, but they have indicated that that will go away um, when they migrate to Debian 11. But we have no time frame on that. Um, but these Calficare advices or call for talent um, devices are a really strong alternative. What we do know that's been worked on is a smaller SBC only device. It'll be known as an NX16. Um, and we expect to have more news around that um, towards the end of this year. They have to go through the certification process. Um, and they'll be a really strong alternative to the Raspberry Pi 4. And you won't have to put it together. You won't have to configure it. You won't have to install the SBC because it'll all be on the device. So at the moment, we've got the dual purpose device. There are larger devices for larger deployments and if you have a need for that, um, reach out to us and we can certainly assist. Um, call for tell, um, stay very up to date with what's happening with 3CX. So I'm going to open the floor to questions. Um, you've got a question mark there on the go to webinar that you can throw any questions our way. I've got a new um, on the call because he's done the most technical testing of the units so um, I needed to have him here so he can hopefully answer any curly questions you may have for us. Um, the purpose of today's bite size webinar literally was just to give you a very quick overview. If you need pricing or anything like that reach out to us um, and we'll share that information with you. Um, as you all know, the New Zealand dollar is very weak at the moment so it makes everything seem um, a little bit more expensive than normal. Um, let me just pop our questions out. Okay, I'm not getting any questions through, which means that I hopefully we've covered everything and Anisha has shown how simple the device is to use. Did you want to add anything in Noop just based on your testing? Uh, all right, um, yeah. Um, uh, during that testing period, it was really stable and, you know, um, everything configured was working very perfectly like i have tested like more than uh, one month uh, one of the device and it was working fine and i was attending calls and um, making creating call queues and everything everything was working as you as expected and also the same time sbc or uh, 3cx on premise both the configuration is so easy like you won't take uh, it won't take more than 10 minutes to configure that's so easy like when we install it on an Intel NAT Core Raspberry Pi. It is a like we have to start from scratch, but this is just like plug it in and connect everything and just configure as a SPC O3 CX done. That's it. So easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so question that's come in is, can you expand the storage on the device? So not on the actual NUC itself. It's just like any other NUC. Is um, it's um, this particular one is locked, you can't expand the storage on there, but you can add the external device and there are plenty of ports on the unit to allow for that. Um, the reason that you shouldn't need to expand the storage on the device itself is the key thing that you would be having is your core recordings and um, as we've said, the best practice would be to put those on an external device um, or better yet, link them up to your CRM and have the recordings um, stored in there as well which can be done with custom development and that type of thing as well so um, um, in terms of availability these are in stock now the NX32 lights are in stock um, I've got those already here we did a press release and this is our um, first um, announcement I guess uh, webinar around them apart from our newsletters. Um, the NX16s, um, we're still waiting. They have to go through the certification process, then we'll get pricing, then we'll place our order. Um, 
they will, we know, go gangbusters. And I know we have to order quite a lot of quantity of those, um, but we know they'll see um, a huge return for our partners in terms of not needing to build a Raspberry Pi 4 for an SBC. So um, these are available now. Just reach out to me um, directly if you'd like pricing information. Um, we just don't share that on the webinar because this is recorded and put into a public forum. So um, um, feel free to reach out to me and I'll answer that for you. Uh, Raspberry Pi 4 is still going to be supported for an SBC, so it is not going to be supported as a device for on-prem 3CX. For anybody that's actually using a Raspberry Pi 4 as the platform for their on-prem 3CX, you'll see that it hasn't actually updated since update 2, um, and we're on live update 4 um, and update 5's at release candidate. So, um, that is causing a lot of confusion because most people would use the Raspberry Pi 4 as an SBC device, but we do have customers with small instances of 3CX on-prem um, that they are running them on a Raspberry Pi 4. So they do need to migrate, um, reach out to us and we can have those discussions offline about what that migration should look like. Um, remembering that you've already got a dedicated license. So just to be clear, the licenses as we've known them for the last 10 years are now called dedicated. Um, and then we have the startup, which is coming as well. Um, so um, SBC supported for 3CX cloud hosting, correct. Um, so if you're using hosted by 3CX, which is their service that uses Volta out of Sydney and Melbourne, um, you can use the Raspberry Pi as the SBC. Um, and the alternate is this um, unit um, and soon to be the smaller unit as well, which obviously smaller unit will be a lesser price um, as well. So um, what we don't know is when that Raspberry Pi 4 um, will be taken away as a SBC supported device, um, but they have indicated that will be happening. So um, we just need to obviously monitor that. Um, and I've already reached out saying, do we have any idea of a time frame? Um, so their roadmap has been very aggressive. Update 5 is going live very soon. Release candidate was overnight, so within a few days we'll be live. Um, but then we would expect to see Update 6 Alpha very soon after, um, along with that revision of the user interface of the web client that has been indicated as well. So there's still a lot to come. Um, and as I say, the time frame we have is that startup is meant to go live at the end of September. I haven't had any notifications or changes to that, um, but obviously it's going to depend on the development. The next piece of that development around startup is the group policies, which is around multi-tenancy within that solution. Um, um, and what that's going to look like for the dedicated licenses as well. We don't know yet, um, but we are watching carefully. We'll keep you updated. Um, and that's why um, Anisha is running um, our second instance of 3CX, so our testing instance, on one of these Call for Tell devices. Um, and it's on update 5 beta 2, which um, Anisha is going to update to the release candidate that's just come out. Um, and then we'll update it to the live. And like everybody else, we'll wait the, you know, two to four weeks before we put the live one on our system. But what we're finding with the development that is occurring, because they are taking their time, they are having a couple of alphas, a couple of betas, a release candidate, um, the updates are stable. Um, we're not seeing any issues. Um, you'll recall they bought in that option to schedule updates to automatically install one month after um, the release of an update um, and so I guess that's their best practice. We just monitor the forums and those types of things before we push our own live system up and um, that's why we run two systems um, side by side. Okay, I don't think we've got any more questions coming in. If you do think of any more questions, please just reach out to us on VoIP at softsoul.co.nz, call me directly or email me directly. Um, and if I can't answer, if it's technical, I'll put you onto a noob, um, which is via our VoIP support at softsoul.co.nz. Um, and, you know, we're very lucky to have um, a Noops experience to be able to do that technical testing. I can do the sales and marketing testing, um, but we need that technical assistance, um, which is fantastic. So um, we'll wrap up the webinar. Thank you very much all for joining us. You will receive a recording. If you have any questions, please do reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer those. So thanks everyone and have a fantastic day.
Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.